On day one, I spawned in as a baby blood golem with 10 hearts. Oh yeah, I'm a red-blooded rebel. I started testing out my abilities and found out I could send ripples through the ground with my ax of a thousand metals. I looked to see if there was anybody around me, but I saw no one in sight. Hello, anyone around? In the midst of the creepy stillness, I was ambushed by some spiders. Quick, let me use my ax. I was able to knock some up, but I was too frail to kill them all. So I ran away. As I was running through the forest, I stumbled upon Steve. Oh wow, I've never seen a golem like you before. I gotta have you. Before I could even speak, Steve tried capturing me. So I gushed out of there and outran him. Phew, that was close. I'm tired. Oh, maybe I can go sleep under that nice looking tree. On day two, I woke up feeling energized, and I decided to build an awesome base. I will create the coolest home anyone's ever seen. I started gathering up some wood to make a crafting table and some tools, such as a pickaxe and sword. Ooh, I'm starving. Hmm, what should I eat? I walked around the plains and found a nice village with several different crops to choose from. Don't mind if I do. As I was stealing some of the crops, I started getting attacked by an iron golem. This guy is so big, I gotta run! As I ran away, I noticed that one of the villagers praised the iron golem for trying to kill me, which made me upset, but also feel kind of bad for him. He probably has no choice but to listen to his creator. Oh well, it was getting dark, so I went to find a cave where I could rest for the night. On day three, I left the cave and found a nice place to call home. Wow, would you look at that? This is the perfect spot, all red and creepy. I started chopping down some trees so that I could build my base. I'm gonna need some more supplies. I wanted my home to look epic, so I went mining for some stone. Then suddenly I started getting swarmed by blood skeletons. Oh no, the fireballs. The skeletons overwhelmed me with their attacks. So I dodged as many as I could and ran out of the cave. I still hadn't eaten anything and started hearing my stomach growl. Just then, I found a piece of land full of chickens. Ooh, come here, you little chickens. After killing some, I took the meat with me and headed home to do some cooking. This bloody golem deserves a feast. It was such a long day, so I devoured my food and went to bed. On days four through five, I started feeling lonely, knowing I was the only golem who was free in the world. I need more friends. There must be more golems around here. I started searching for more golems and couldn't see any in sight. So I decided to go back to that same village from earlier. When I arrived, I found the iron golem and decided to have a chat. Hello, fellow golem. I have some questions to ask you. I asked him why he listened to the mean villagers, knowing he was much stronger than them. I'm not gonna lie, one day, I would explode if they keep me like this. And then a villager approached him. Get to work, you golem. Why aren't you defending the village? You're useless. The iron golem started bursting with anger and couldn't take it anymore. He then went crazy and killed the villager. You should go now. This won't end well for me. I listened to the golem and started running away, watching him be bombarded by the villagers. I couldn't stand to watch. On day six through eight, I went mining after all that chaos. I was able to collect tons of iron. While I was mining though, I had a strange feeling. Something seems odd. I feel like someone is watching me. Who's out there? Am I acting paranoid? I still had a feeling that someone was following me. So I looked around and saw an amethyst golem spying on me. Whoa, come back here, you sneaky golem. I started chasing him until we reached a dead end and saw that the poor little guy was extremely terrified. He then started telling me that his family was taken by some humans. Don't worry, little guy, I'll be your friend. Let's name you Chip. I then went home and took Chip along for the ride. On days nine through 10, I started building a room for Chip, adding many cute details to make him feel at home. I then began building a nice farm using some of the crops that I stole from the village. Well, these crops came in handy. I needed to go shear some sheep, so I left the base and headed off to do some searching. I looked around and found some sheep on a nice patch of grass. I then attained some of their wool and killed them for their meat. I ate some of the delicious raw mutton and then something crazy happened. 
Whoa! After that tasty meal, I gained 25 hearts! Not only did I gain hearts, but I turned into a bigger golem and was able to teleport with my new Enderman hand ability. Suddenly, I got attacked by a giant redstone golem! Perfect timing. I can test out my new powers. The golem was too powerful. Not even my new powers could defeat him. So instead, I teleported away. Huh, I wonder why another golem would want to attack me. I thought I was one of them. After doing some thinking, I headed home and made some beds for Chip and I to get a good night's sleep. On day 11, I had an insane dream. I was in some sort of factory. What the heck? Why are all these golems working on an assembly line? Suddenly, a mysterious man walked up to me. Like what you see. Who are you? And what are you doing with all these golems? Oh, me? I'm Oznob, AKA Anti-Bronzo. And these little creatures work and exist strictly to serve me. Osnorb? <laughs> That's so dumb! It's just Bronzo spelled backwards! Silence! So you must be the one causing chaos among the golem species. That's why that redstone golem attacked me. Oh yes, the redstone golem is one of my latest creations. You can't just create golems to do all your dirty work. We have rights too. That's where you're wrong. You see, I'm gonna rule every last golem there is on this planet, including you. You're insane for creating such a thing. I'm gonna stop you and free all the golems in the land. Golems shouldn't be servants for players. They should be equals fighting side by side. Well, good luck trying to stop me and my mutant golem army. <laughs> Obsidian golem, come to me. No! Just like that, I woke up and knew what I had to do. From days 12 through 15, I hurried off to tell Chip about my dream. That's great and all, Chip, but we're gonna need more help if we wanna stop Osnorb. We need to find more golems and bring them here, the golem sanctuary. First, I had to build more rooms for future golems to stay in. Now we're gonna have so much space. Next, I wanted to have some sheep live at the base to make the place look more alive. So I built a pen. I need some of this wheat for the sheep. I traveled and found some sheep. Using my wheat, I lured them back to the base and into the pen. I even grabbed some poppies along the way. Hmm, they're missing something. Oh, I know. I placed all the poppies around my home. It looked amazing. The golem sanctuary is really coming to life. I used the rest of the flowers to make red dye and dyed some of the sheep red. They kind of look like blood sheep now. I wasted no time. I went adventuring for more golems to team up with. On days 16 to 19, I was exploring when I came across a new village. I wonder if I can make any new golem friends here. While looking through the village, I saw a strange looking golem, a furnace golem, who looked sad. What's wrong, buddy? All these villagers keep making me work for them. Smell this, fight that, it's so tiring. I don't think any golem should be forced to do anything. Now what do you think I should do? Say no? So punish me. We then came up with a plot to revolt and kill all the villagers in the town. Attack! Attack! Together we took down the villagers and I used my powers to launch them into the sky and I could outspeed them with my teleportation. The furnace golem used the flames within them to set the villagers on fire. Look at them burn! <laughs> Finally, there was only one villager left. Please, let me live. No, you must be punished for how you treated the furnace golem. I then somehow lifted the villager into the air and glitched him out of existence. After that massacre, I went to go speak to the furnace golem. We did it! Thank you so much for helping me. Here, take some calls for your troubles. Thank you, but I'm always happy to help set other golems free. Hey, why don't you come live with me at my base? I like that. Beats living in this ghost town. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. We then set off back to my base. We got back to the base for days 20 to 23, and to our surprise, Osnorb was there, wreaking havoc with his TNT golem. Welcome home. <laughs> what are you doing here? TNT Timmy, do it. He then had his TNT golem blow up, destroying a huge portion of it. No! 
I was too dumbfounded to do anything and watched as Osnorb rode off into the distance. I swear I'll kill that Osnorb if it's the last thing I do. The furnace golem and I cleaned up the mess and I even made an extra room for my new friend. This place is great. I'm excited to leave here and go on many adventures with you, Bronzo. Me too, buddy. I went over to Chip to share the news of our new resident. I'm glad we are all acquainted, but the good times are almost over. We have a lot of work to do if we want to rid this world of that anti-bronzo Osnorb. On days 24 through 28, I went mining for more iron to build the perfect armor set. I gotta be well equipped if I'm going into battle. I then collected enough iron and was able to build a chest plate and boots. After building some more armor, I headed home and on the way, I ran into some cobblestone golems. They appeared quite interesting, made of cobblestone with four legs. Who do you work for? I didn't have enough time to talk to them. After I hit them, he acted like a creeper and blew up. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Suddenly, the little broken parts on the ground ran back to his form, bringing the golem back to life. Ugh, you're built different. I kept fighting the golem, using my axe of a thousand metals to take it down, but it kept exploding every time I tried getting a hit in. I tried to teleport away before it could explode in my face, but it was hard to get back to hit the little guys. Just then, an oxidated golem came out of nowhere and helped me kill the little guys. Hit the little beasts before they morph into one. Together, we were able to kill all the little tiny golems before they formed back into the giant cobblestone golem. Thank you for your help. Wait, you seem familiar. Oh, I know you. You're that iron golem from that village I had to desert. So what happened to you that day? It was a dark time for me, but I managed to escape into the forest and hid for some weeks. Hey, don't worry. I have a plan for you. Come stay at my golem sanctuary. You'll be safe there. The golem agreed to stay with me, knowing he had nowhere else to hide, and we headed off to the base. For days 29 to 33, we got back to the base, and I wasted no time with making a new room for my old friend, the oxidized iron golem. I hope you like your new home. And here, a bed just for you. I've never had a bed before. Thanks. It was awesome to see my friend happy, and it was nice to finally have a moment of peace. But that was soon broken when Chip ran in. He told us that there was a giant purple golem destroying the sheep. I ran outside and saw it was an ender golem. This isn't good. The ender golem then noticed me. This really isn't good. The fight was initiated and this ender golem was very powerful and used its ability to summon purple cubes from the ground. Just then, my friend, the oxidated iron golem, came out to help me. Eventually, the two of us were able to defeat this ender golem by working together and coordinating our attacks. We did it, let's go! Just then, I turned into an iron blood golem with 50 hearts. Whoa, I'm so big now. I also had a new ability. When I put on this helm of darkness, I could turn myself invisible. Wait, where'd you go? I never left. <laughs> oh, wow, that power is awesome. And will come in handy when I need to be stealthy with my attack on Osnorb. On days 34 through 37, I walked around thinking to myself, wait, I just realized something. All humans must be contained or the golem species will never have peace. Just then, Steve showed up. This time, I wasn't going to let that sneaky guy get away. Oh, hey, remember me? Gulp. I started chasing Steve as he ran away begging for help and then pulled him in with my gauntlet of the guard. Do you think you can get away, huh? Think again. I then gave him a huge hit, causing him to surrender instantly. That's what I thought. Now tell me, why and how are you capturing golems? It's actually a funny story. You see, it reminds me of Pokemon. Look. He then pulled out his monster balls and showed me how they worked on a nearby cow. Give me all your monster balls, now. Uh, uh, okay, fine. Steve was hesitant at first, but eventually he gave me the monster balls and I immediately captured him in one. Ah, help me, why? <laughs> I heard Steve muffling inside the ball and all I could do was stare and have a good laugh before I headed home. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is just the beginning. Now don't get any ideas. On days 38 through 40, I started building a prison for all the humans using stone to make it as sturdy as possible. Mm-mm-hmm. Now who should I add in here first? I looked at Steve and he looked absolutely terrified. This is my prison? I can just mine out right now. Oh no, you can't. Suddenly, I turned all the cobblestone into bedrock. How did you do that? I'm the blood golem. I can do anything. You can lock me up all you want. I'll just sit here and watch you fail. Better than being inside of that bubble. Am I right? <laughs> you're no better than Osnorb if your plan is to capture every human on the planet. What a shame. What Steve said to me had me thinking. You know, he was actually right. For once, I was starting to feel like a villain, but then remembered my plan was to help my species. Whatever. Have fun rotting in here. My eyes were on the prize, and I wasn't going to let anybody stop me. So I went mining for some more diamonds to build some useful tools such as a sword, pickaxe, and axe. I was satisfied with what I had collected for the day, so I left the cave and headed home to go to sleep. On days 41 through 43, I used some of my iron to make a helmet and leggings. The reckoning is upon us. I went from village to village, capturing different people using my monster balls. Steve was right. This feels like a Pokemon game. Woohoo! After a while, I threw all of my hostages inside of my prison. We're innocent. I have children waiting for me. Are you proud of yourself? Their babies will never see their parents again. You're increasing the orphan population. I knew this is what I had to do, so I apologized and headed off. Sorry, everyone. I promise you this will be worth it. I entered my home and found that the furnace golem had made something special for me. I made you a gift as a thank you for everything you've done for me. He then handed me a panic necklace, which he made with his own forge. What a neat looking piece. The necklace allowed me to move faster after taking damage, which was incredibly helpful. It felt good knowing that he had my back. So I thanked him and went to do some exploring. On days 44 through 49, I went to do some deep searching in the tundra. Just then, I started getting bombarded by some snow leopards. Thankfully, I have my special abilities to help me fight. I started off by teleporting around to confuse them and use my axe of a thousand metals to destroy them. As soon as I finished with the battle, I ran into Osnorb, who was talking to some mutant snow golem. So I used my powers to go invisible. Haha, -ha, he can't see me. Let's see what they're talking about. I heard Osnorb threaten the mutant snow golem to join him. Otherwise, he would banish them into the dark forest dimension. I'll harm you the same way I did the diamond golem. So you better join my forces, or else. As soon as Osnorb left, I went to the golem to talk to them. Hey, I heard that stupid threat. Why didn't you attack? Osnorb is too powerful now. We don't have enough members to fight against him. I don't know what to do. This can't be happening. We need to come up with a plan and fight together. I then asked them about the diamond golem to see if there was a possibility of them joining our team. You see, the diamond golem was the strongest and bravest of them all. But when they stood up to Osnorb, it all went downhill from there. Only one survived, but he was banished forever. We lost the good ones. Well, I have a golem sanctuary where you can stay. Oh yes, please. I can't stand being here any longer. I want to live. All right then, follow me. I was happy to help save as many golems as possible. So I took the golem with me and we headed back to the base. On days 50 through 53, I made a bed for the mutant snow golem so they felt comfortable in their new home. How cozy. Thank you. No problemo. I want to make sure you feel welcomed. I then started to wonder if the other golem knew any details about the dark forest dimension. So I went to chat with him about it. Hey, I have a question for you. Ask away, my friend. Do you happen to know anything about the dark forest dimension? I really want to know the way to get there. Hmm. I'm not too sure about that place. The iron golem didn't seem to know anything about it, nor did any of the other golems around us. Well, I guess I need to do more research. Since nobody really knew anything, I decided to give up for now and go mining for some diamonds. I could use some more armor. Let's go see what we can find. I entered the cave and found several diamonds, enough to upgrade my armor. Awesome. I think I have enough diamonds for a chest plate and some boots. As soon as I finished building my armor, I continued through the cave and saw a bunch of amethyst golems 
being dragged around by a villager. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on here? I approached the villager and decided to bring justice to the poor golems. You better set those golems free. Either you do as I say, or you'll do it the hard way. The villager took one look at me and completely refused my offer. Did you listen to what I said? You better set those golems free or else. I stood my ground and gave them one more chance to let them go. But instead of listening, they just laughed at me and continued to drag the golems around. I guess you'll learn the hard way then. Off you go. I immediately glitched them out of existence and saw the amethyst golems wander around in excitement, knowing they were now liberated. Hey, little guys, I have a wonderful sanctuary where you'll meet a ton of other golems like you. Why don't you follow me? I wanted to make sure these golems were never held in captivity again. Again. So they agreed and followed me all the way to the base. On days 54 through 58, I arrived at the base with all the golems and gave Chip a little reunion. Hey Chip, look who we have here. It was great to see Chip reunited with his family. Well, I'm glad I could bring you guys together. I then left to make a bunch of huts for the amethyst golems to make sure everyone had a cozy nook where they could settle in. Rest assured guys, you're safe here. After I finished building the huts, the amethyst golems absolutely loved them and immediately went to make themselves at home. Just then, the golems started sharing something insightful, letting me know about their recent discovery. Huh, that's interesting. I wonder how powerful this blood ore is. I might have to go check it out myself. The golems left me very intrigued. So I decided to go mining for blood ore to make some blood armor and found that it was extremely powerful. Oh wow, it's even better than diamonds. Suddenly, while I was mining, I ran into some trolls. Get away, you ugly trolls. They were tricky opponents, hitting me hard with their clubs and running around to get me distracted. I then fought back with my awesome powers and started to scare them away. This was the perfect time because I then glitched myself out of the caves. Oh, I have an idea. I then glitched the trolls outside of the cave and they immediately turned into stone because of the daylight. <laughs> I then planted a bunch of poppies next to them so everyone would know who won this battle. On days 59 through 62, I decided I needed more help if I was going to stop Osnorb. Just then, Chip gave me a suggestion. Good thinking, Chip. I could definitely find some help there. I then went mining for some obsidian so that I could start building my nether portal. Alrighty, I think I have enough. I then was able to create my nether portal and went inside of it. Nice, I made it here safely. I spoke too soon because soon as I stepped out of the portal, I started getting attacked by some zombie piglins. You guys picked on the wrong blood golem. Now that I was this powerful, my battles were getting easier. I then killed all the piglins and continued my search. As I continued looking around, I came across a blood crawler. Whoa, interesting creature. I hit the blood crawler and it immediately took a step back. It even seemed friendly. Hey, stop. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I thought you were a feisty creature. I guess not. Nope, I wouldn't hurt a bee. Now tell me. What are you doing around here? Well, I could use some answers. Do you happen to know anyone or anything that can stop a supervillain? I guess it depends on which villain you're fighting against, but I do know someone who could help. I then saw the blood crawler think for a second, and then they gave me some more great advice. Oh really? Who is it? Yes, there is a giant nether golem who lives around here. I've heard that this creature can stop anyone that comes their way. Why don't you give them a try? I guess it's worth a try. Thank you so much. I knew I needed to find the nether golem and perhaps they could make the perfect teammate. So I thanked the blood crawler and left. On day 60 through through 66, I ran into a golden golem who saw me as a threat and immediately attacked me. Hey, don't attack me. I'm a golem just like you. They started to use their smashing powers, so I had no choice but to kill them. What the heck was that about? I continued to do some more searching after defeating the golem and eventually came across the nether golem's location. Oh yeah, I made it. Now how do I get to the golem without getting attacked by them? I then met the nether golem Golems, who had big hammers and shields and some spiky tails. One of them appeared as if they were captured and mutated to include some gold in their body. I come in peace. In fact, I have a proposition for you. A proposition, I see. Tell me more. 
I started telling them about the Golden Golem and how I was suddenly attacked by them. They work for Osmorp, and everyone thinks Nether Golems are the bad guys since they look the scariest. Perhaps we are just misunderstood. I see. Well, I don't think that at all. I actually need your help. I thought it was the perfect time to ask for some help, so I went for it. My proposition is that I need your help to take down Osnorb. Would you want to be my partner in crime? That sounds tempting, but I can't live anywhere besides the Nether. All I can do to help is give this to you. The Nether Golem then handed me a Netherite sword, which had eight damage. Whoa, this is a very powerful weapon. It's the least I can do to help. Do you happen to know anything about the Dark Forest Dimension? The Nether Golem seemed confused, but also acted like they remembered something. Hmm, I do not know about that Forest Dimension, but I do know someone who's mentioned it before. The Witch. I've heard her talking about it when she's in the Nether. The Witch? Hmm, I'm gonna have to go find her to get some more answers. Thank you for everything. I thanked them for the support and took the weapon they had gave me. My next plan was to find the Witch. On days 67 through 70, I returned back into the overworld. Now where is that witch? I went searching for her, looking left and right, knowing she could be lurking anywhere. Maybe she's at the swamp. I headed over to the closest swamp I could find and then saw something very disturbing. Is that who I think it is? It was Osnorb riding his obsidian golem. So I started to follow him. Ooh, I should go invisible. I then put on my helm of darkness and continued to follow Osnorb. I came to find out he led me to the witch who was working with him. Oh no, this is not looking good. Make me a potion, will ya? One that gives me complete control over all the golems. <laughs> or what? Huh? You'll make me banish them into the dark forest again? Just then I noticed Osnorb grow uncomfortable, lowering his voice as he spoke with her. Shh! Don't talk too loud. Someone might hear us. They have no idea. Well, you know how I feel about this. You've been asking for some ridiculous potions lately. Just do your little magic and give me what I need. See you very soon. They wrapped up their conversation and I saw Osnorb leave. As soon as he left, I uncloaked behind the witch and caught her by surprise. Ah! Who are you? Don't ask any questions. Tell me, where is the portal to the dark forest dimension. You got the wrong witch. The witch booked it and left me hanging with no answers. Luckily, I had my teleportation powers, so I started chasing after her. On days 71 through 74, I continued chasing the witch until I finally came up with a good idea on how to capture her. Ooh, I know what I can do. I brought out my monster balls and used them on her, trapping her inside of it. Oh yeah, these things are super handy. Please let me out of here. If you do, I promise to tell you everything. Everything? I might have to take you up on that. I decided to give it a try. After all, I really needed some answers. So I let her out and we did some talking. All right, you're out, but don't get any ideas. If I see you pull any weird move, you're going to be stuck in here forever. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. All right, witch, spill. Osnorb made me make the portal in exchange for exotic ingredients. I had no choice. I was running low on supplies. I was getting closer to where I needed to be, so I asked her to take me there. Lead the way. We arrived at the portal location, and I saw that it was guarded by giant bugs. Beware. Those bugs are called the Krivel. They are faster than you think and as sharp as a tech. Nobody is faster than me. Let's go. I started fighting against these weird bugs and the witch was right. They were extremely fast and packed a punch. Luckily, I was more powerful and killed them all. All right, let's go in the portal. It's now or never. You're crazy for going in there willingly, but okay. This had to be done. Even though the witch thought it was a bad idea, I took a breath and went for it. Here goes nothing on day 75. Five through 78, I entered the dark forest dimension. Whoa, this place looks crazy. I looked around the dimension and saw that it was dark and full of glowing trees scattered around. Looks like we need to do some chopping. I took out my ax and started getting to work in order to make my way through the forest. As I continued doing some chopping, I started getting ambushed by dark forest zombies who raged against me. Ah, take that, you zombies. I had no time to waste, so I killed them all and kept looking 
looking. I need to find the last diamond golem while I'm here. After looking for a while, I finally found the diamond golem, and he was fighting off a bunch of dark cows. Here you are. I approached the golem and started talking to him, hoping to receive some advice. Hello there, diamond golem. I'm Bronzo. Bronzo, get me out of here. I've been stuck in here for ages. I can do that. I then helped him escape by making my way through the forest while fending off dark forest creatures. Some of them look like weird endermen and stick figures with darkness powers. After we made our way through the forest, we arrived at the portal and ran inside of it. Freedom! Now that we're here, can I ask you something? Oh yeah, ask me anything. I am so grateful to be out of that dark hole. Could you possibly train me? I want to be the most skilled golem around. I see. You're probably having a hard time controlling your powers. But you're kind of weird after all. Here, I'll help you. I needed all the help I could get. The diamond golem agreed to help me train, and we agreed to start at dawn. On days 79 through 84, I started my training with the diamond golem, and he taught me all kinds of fancy moves. Let the training begin. First, he taught me how to sword fight, and it was the perfect time to use my netherite sword. You're getting better at it. It's all in the aim. I definitely feel some improvement. We then moved to using a shield I had crafted, and he taught me how to use it in the most efficient manner. We then finished our training session with some meditation. I felt myself changing from within. This meditation took me far beyond where I thought it would, turning me into my biggest form with 100 hearts. This is pretty cool. The diamond golem was proud of me for reaching this form, and he knew I was prepared to defeat Osnorb. My efforts in this training were worth it. Just look at you. You're ready. Offering him a place to stay was the least I could do, so I told him he could stay at my base. You should stay with me. There are several other golems here who could use your protection and guidance. Thank you for the offer, but I just want to live in a free world again. That's all. Sounds good, but I appreciate you helping me. Goodbye, friend, and good luck with your journey. The diamond golem left my base, which in my opinion was too soon because later we were attacked by the redstone golem again. Stop what you are doing. This time I was prepared to get revenge by using my ax of a thousand metals and my teleportation to fight against him. And my netherite sword did so much damage on him. Eventually I was able to kill the redstone golem, which made me sad knowing I had killed someone who belonged to my species. I wish I didn't have to do this. Hey, what is that? I then noticed they had dropped a book which read, Property of Osnorp Corp. If damaged or lost, please return to 153 Brownsville Avenue. Would you look at that? Now it'll be easy to find him. On days 85 through 89, the furnace golem came up to talk to me. Hey, Bronzo, I've been doing some sinking. Yeah, what's on your mind? Don't you think keeping these villagers here against the whale is a bit much? Do you know what would happen if they were free? They would capture you and you would be held in captivity forever. It's either them or you. He then started to explain how an eye for an eye was not a good way to run a government. The golem had a good point, but I still wasn't sure how to go about this in the smartest way possible. Well, let me see what I can do. I then went to go talk to the villagers to see if we could come up with something that could favor us all. Hey everyone, I have an announcement. If I set you free, then you have to travel all around the world and tell all the villagers that they need to set their golems free or else the blood golem will come after them. Does that sound like a good plan? The villagers looked around at each other and then they started to agree with my plan. So I set them free under my conditions. Here, take this. With this hammer, you can mine way faster. Steve gave me something that was incredibly useful. A hammer that could mine three by three chunks for ores rather than just one at a time. So I thanked him and went to do some digging. I then went into the caves and as I was mining for some blood ore, I tested out the new hammer and found myself working incredibly fast. Oh wow, I think I found enough to make an all new armor set. On days 90 through 93, I was still in the caves testing out my new weapon. I met some coal golems. The golems were running from demon wolves who were trying to kill them. I'll help you guys. I then brought out my ax and swiped those wolves. It didn't take long for me to win the fight and talk to the coal golems who were incredibly thankful for my help. 
You guys need a safe place to stay? Come with me. I then made the coal golems follow me back to my base, where I would give them a warm place to live. Seems like we're gonna have to expand the base since we're adding members to the golem family. I started building a nice little house out of the dark forest wood I collected. Ooh, this place is coming together. I then noticed that the iron golem was super impressed by all my golems I was bringing. Wow, Bronzo. Are you building an army? I'm fighting for these golems, and they will always have freedom under my watch. For days 94 to 96, I saw the witch show up, and she had an important message to share with me. Look who it is. You're back. Osnor moved his base to a new dimension, one just for you, called the Blood Dimension. She then told me about Osnorb's new plan, which was made just for me. Did he now? He's planning a trap, isn't he? I then realized that's where I needed to go in order to take him down. I can't reveal too much, but I do have something that could help you. She then gave me a map to the portal, which led to the blood dimension. Oh, thank you. This will be an easy trip with this handy map. I'm sorry for what you're about to see, Bronzo. I was a little confused as to why the witch was suddenly so apologetic. Had she done something I didn't know about? Unfortunately, I have spent too much time in the dark dimension, and I'm afraid to say that the darkness has overtaken me. That's all right. You're here helping me now, which is good. You don't understand. The witch couldn't hold it in much longer. She then transformed into a dark forest witch. Hey, what are you doing? She then used her potions of weakness and poison on me. At last, I am in my true form. You traitor! I was able to win the battle, but I still felt bad knowing the witch sacrificed herself for the information she had now given me. On days 97 through 98, I followed the map, which led me to a giant red portal. This must be the entrance to the blood dimension. I walked right in, wasting no time, and I was instantly transported to the blood dimension. Whoa, this definitely is the right place. While I was there, I immediately started getting bombarded by blood furies. Ah, not the furies! With the help of my powerful abilities, I was able to take them down super quickly. Then suddenly, some blood endermen appeared. One opponent after another! I then fought the Blood Endermen and was able to teleport just as fast as them. Aha! You can't see me! I then defeated all the Endermen and continued looking around the Blood Dimension. This place is super creepy. Weird things in every corner! Suddenly, a floating eyeball came up to me and it didn't seem to want to hurt me, so I asked it a question. Oh, hello there, weird floating eyeball. Do you happen to know about Osnorb? The eyeball then told me about how Osnorb was using the power of the blood dimension to create more blood golems like me to release out into the world. That's terrible. I must stop him now. I knew deep down that I wanted to be around more blood golems like me, but that he would unfortunately use them for evil. I had to do something. Do you know where he is? The eyeball then took me to Osnorb's base, where I saw him placing a blood altar before he walked away. I knew I had to act quick, but I had one more thing I needed to do, so I said my goodbyes and headed home. On day 99, I headed back home and told all the golems about my mission to battle against Osnorb. It'll be quite the fight, but I am ready for it. The golems wished me good luck and gave me their support before I headed off to my battle. Is there anything we can do to assist you before you go on your journey? Oh yes, actually. Please go like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you never miss another video. Also, comment down below what mob you want to see me be for another 100 days video. We can do that. The golems all cheered for me, filling me with adrenaline and happiness before we parted ways. Thanks for all the support, guys. I'm going to need it. I then shared a heartful moment with Chip as I saw him happily reunited with his family. I looked around and realized I couldn't let anybody down. They were now my golem family. I'm going to win, and I'll come back home. I promise. I finished saying my goodbyes and left on my journey, knowing I was about to enter an epic battle. I then arrived at the Blood Dimension and started started heading towards Osnorb's base. Well, here goes nothing. On day 100, I got back to Osnorb's base and saw him standing in front of one of his altars, ready to confront me. Hello, Osnorb. I'm here to take you down. Is that so? I think it's a little too late for that. Osnorb then told me that once he activated his altar, the blood golems would take over. And not just in this world, but in all of them. 
That's impossible! I'm not gonna allow that to happen! I use my gauntlet of guard to force Osnorb away from the altar, and then we immediately started to fight! Osnorb pulled out his blood sprayer, shooting blood everywhere, also using his void core and flamed dragon bone sword against me! Ugh, I won't let you do this! I tried glitching him away, but he was incredibly strong! He then summoned a group of sprinkled golems to distract me, and then started running back to the altar! Not so fast! Too slow! You can't stop me now! I then teleported to him to block the altar, hoping it would keep him from activating it so soon! I don't think so, Osnorb! I then used my blood golem powers, and everything started to shake! The world even started glitching out! What's happening to me? I finally stopped the chaos as Osnorb glitched out of existence and won the final battle! No!